The one question that gets asked more than any other in the art world is, what is this worth? What is the value of this artwork? But what do we really mean when we talk about value? There are all sorts of different forms of value in regards to art. Aesthetic value. An intangible value or significant. It's perhaps the emotional one. It can be a reflection of who we are. It can inspire us. Kind of an enjoyment and a sense of well-being. There's a, a whole stream of different values that art has. So how do we measure these values? In what ways do they interplay with one another? And who decides what values are the most valuable? I think that money talks. When people ask about the value of art, they're generally really talking about financial value. And $90,000 to start this. 90000 is bid. Thank you, sir. The instant thought when you say value is um, monetary value. Yeah, we see it and hear it every, every day in the galleries. The desire to kind of fix it down to a number is quite appealing. I mean, it's like in an auction. When the work of an artist makes a record, everyone claps. They're basically clapping themselves. I think it's understandable because so much of our, our current discourse about art is monetary based. So we're always talking about who's made the most at auction, who the kind of high selling art figures are. So let's get into it. Who and what ultimately decides the value of a piece? Monetary value, I mean, it, it's, it's supply and demand. In our business, the art market decides what a piece of art is worth. The collectors who are interested in that work will ultimately determine what it's worth and what someone is willing to pay for it. When there aren't a lot of things, we have a global market. The astronomical values of some works compared to others, um, we can do very little about. When setting a valuation, oh. specialists consider a variety of factors that contribute to the value of a piece. So they look at things like authenticity, they look at condition, uh, rarity, they'll look at what's in fashion, they'll look at the subject matter of the work, um, all various things, the provenance of the work. The relationship between art and money is well established, but prior to the 19th century, it was power that was the real driving force in the art world. Autocratic power dominated patronage systems as early as ancient Rome. Take the reign of Augustus and his advisor Masonus characterised by the peers' commissioning of work by poets and artists for the benefit of the state. This relationship continued throughout history. In the Renaissance and the early modern periods, a pope or a powerful monarch please snap their fingers and insist on being given a Titian or a Van Dyck by a courtier. Art was a way of gaining prestige, promoting political positions, and it was often exchanged or gifted to gain leverage in the courts. If you look back to something really famous, so the Medici family, 15th century Florence, you know, they would pay an awful lot of money for these masterpieces, they'd display them on their walls, and it was a sign of their wealth. But after the Industrial Revolution, money became the centre of the art world. Jumping forward to 1958, over 21 minutes, the Goldschmidt sale changed the world of art forever. An auction of 11 Impressionist artworks by the likes of Edouard Manet and Paul Cézanne, it established a new era of expertise and esteem, said to be the sale of the century. And it set three world records for a painting price in a single auction. And it set up what we now know as the, the evening auction, the evening sale. People dressed up, it was theatre, they came along and enjoyed the evening and, and bid on these beautiful pieces of work. And that sort of set a, a high standard back in 1958. Journalists present described whistles of surprise, cries, roars of laughter. And one noted that as prices soared, it was sometimes hard to remember it had anything to do with art. The people buying art and the reasons for doing so are constantly evolving as our world changes. This is a sign, if you're talking about interested in power, if you look at where art goes, it follows the money. In the last 10 or 20 years, we've seen Asia and Russia, for example, um, you know, enter that arena of buying art and collecting. All these things have led to a much more global market pace. 
you know, we have works, Italian works which were in France during the French Revolution. The French Revolution happens, they get sold, they come to London and they get sold in London. I mean, London at that time is the richest places. Then those sorts of works that go into, uh, went into the great houses of 19th century Britain, then started getting sold off and go to America. Then they're getting sold in America and going to the Middle East or to China. It always, it reflects where, where, it reflects where the money is. Though financial value is often seen as the be all and end all, art has a whole host of other values. From the educational to the inspirational. Art's very visual, so it can take you perhaps more easily to another time or place. It speaks of what society is, or can speak of what society is, or what society is going through, or what society looked like. It gives me a sense of joy, a sense of perspective, a sense of um, connecting with the world around us. Uh, there are so many artists who allow us, through their own work, to see better the world. Uh, and I think we're at a really critical time in terms of how art can um, present us with um, ways of seeing the world around us in ways that provoke us to action. Art's capacity to benefit well-being and mental health is another key consideration. Something we're thinking about increasingly is how can artworks or kind of engagement with artworks being close to them kind of help you with those sort of issues. We can stand in front of an artwork and uh, feel a whole set of sensations. Of course, with sky-high prices in the art markets, there are tough decisions to be made about whether or not the financial value of works are worth the price from public funds, particularly given the rise of auction prices in recent decades. If you look at the 1990s, there was another sort of acceleration in prices of art. And, and now, uh, just in the last 10, 20 years, we broke the $100 million mark uh, for a single piece of work being sold at auction. It's difficult for us to buy things. Then it comes, we have to make choices and we have to go through a lot of hoops in order to try and get something that's worth more. It's a cutthroat world and, you know, it's a tough time for museums. Andy Warhol, who was famously obsessed with fame and wealth, said, an artist is someone who produces things that people don't need to have. But this ignores the power of art to inspire, to educate and to help the mind. It's a combination of the art markets, collectors, critics and galleries that ultimately decide the value of an artwork. But where they all agree is that generally it's the intangible power of art that gives true value. I think that there's an instinctual reaction that we all have to work. Does it, does it tell me something? Does it do something to me? Anybody, you or I, can stand in front of a piece of work and have that instinctive response to it. That's the intrinsic value of it. And, and the financial value can't affect that. In a way, monetary value is, is meaningless. For, I mean, once a work of art has entered, the great museums of the world. It's not really important anymore. The work of art is there for everyone to see and enjoy. What makes a piece of art valuable to you? Let us know in the comments below and check out our channel for more videos in the series.